Hey everyone, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Mike McCutcheon. Today I'm just going to show you something very simple, and that's how to take pictures of fingerprints. I've done lots of videos on how to lift fingerprints and process fingerprints, but how to actually document them and take pictures. And I have all of these books, and these are some of the best books that I own for processing crime scenes and crime scene photography. And none of these books tell you how to actually take a picture of a fingerprint. It'll say document the scene. It'll talk about depth of field. It'll tell you what lenses you should use and, and these type of things. It doesn't tell you how to take a simple picture of a fingerprint. So that's what we're going to do today. Super easy, super fast. Now, some things you will see will tell you that you need a tripod to take pictures of fingerprints. I'm not focusing on fingerprints when we're in the lab. I'm talking about when you're on the scene and you're processing fingerprints and you have lots of fingerprints all over the place, you're not going to want to have to use a tripod every time you take a picture of a fingerprint. Think if you had a fingerprint uh, on a window and there's several fingerprints there or um, you're processing, maybe you fume and process there and there's different objects, you're not going to wait until you get all the way back to the lab to start documenting and taking pictures of those fingerprints. And then even when you do get them back there, you may not have the, if you're not in the lab and you're at your station, you may not have the equipment or a copy stand to have all the lights. This is the easiest way to take uh, pictures of your fingerprints. Very, very simple. So how we're going to do this? Well, first, you do need a, um, a macro lens. You don't necessarily need a one-to-one -one lens for this, but a macro lens you will be able to see the difference. What I've done is I've taken some uh, objects here and I've put some fingerprints on them. I'm gonna take a picture uh, showing the difference of how close you can get with clarity with the macro lens and using just your standard, this is an 18 to 55, just a standard lens. Um, if you took that picture without a macro lens and, and look at the difference. Let's take a look at that picture real quick. So here in the first picture, this is as close as I can get when I use a regular lens and I'm not using the macro lens. Now if we switch over to the macro lens, look how close I can get in the great detail using that macro lens. So I really encourage a macro lens. So as you can see from that picture, the difference between a macro lens and a regular lens is night and day. You really have to zoom in um, and you lose that clarity when you're taking a fingerprint picture from a distance. So what do we need for our fingerprints? Well, we need the macro lens. And the critical, the critical piece that you need is you need an off-camera flash. So you need a flash, and this is a sync cord that is going to plug into our camera. Um, or they have ones that it's a wireless um, sync cord and then that would also trigger the flash. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I have this sync cord plugged into my flash here and then I'm going to plug that in to my camera. Now I put my camera on uh, aperture mode so that's going to be A for the aperture mode and I'm going to adjust that aperture. I'm going to go really high on the aperture. I'm gonna go all the way up to like an F22. And now, if you see other videos I've made, um, that aperture is really, really small. It's not gonna let a lot of light in. But that's okay, because we're gonna blast this fingerprint with our flash. And it's such a small area that we don't need a lot of that light to come in. Also, I use an F22 because once we use a smaller F-stop, it gives us more depth of field. So you see here, all of the objects that I have are curved surfaces. And I did that on purpose because if you take a picture and you really open up that um, aperture and you're losing, using a really low aperture, what's going to happen is as that fingerprint curves around that object, you'll, it'll be nice and clear and focused on the top, 
and then you'll lose focus as that fingerprint curves around because your depth of field is so small when we're using macro photography, less than an inch. So that's why I like to use a higher um, or a smaller aperture in F22. Now we can adjust that if we need it. So how we do this is very, very simple. First, I have my camera on here and I'm going to take a picture here. I have this light bulb and I have lots of fingerprints all over this light bulb. So now how are we going to take a picture of these fingerprints? So you want to come in here with your camera. This is your standard setup. You're going to Oh, beautiful. Look at that. That is so beautiful. But now that's going to be too dark. So I am pushing um, to see how much light I'm going to need. And it's telling me that in this light, since it's such a small aperture and I'm focusing in, that I would need to leave the shutter open for six seconds. That's, you can't hold it. You would need a tripod. So now I'm going to turn my flash on. Got to do that. Now I have it on through the lens, TTL, through the lens. I'm going to hold it at about a 45 degree angle. Now, when I look at that fingerprint, oh, this is going to be so beautiful. Oh, that's gorgeous. Now I have a beautiful print, properly lit. It's looking gorgeous. And I use that flash. Now, if that's too much flash, you could move it a little further away. Nice. Now, one of the things that you may need when you're taking your pictures and you should be using, if your camera can't focus in on that with the autofocus, you could use manual focus, or you could use these small little stickers. And these small little stickers can be put next to your fingerprint like that. Now your camera has something to focus in on. So auto focus on. Now, certainly, let's move these books. Certainly, this is something that we can um, use when we have a nice solid surface, okay? But how about something more difficult when we have glass? How are we going to take a picture of this? Well, that's where these stickers are really important because our camera, particularly if you're trying to use this in autofocus, you're going to put that next to your fingerprint and you can't see this fingerprint here just because it's in the glass you can see the sticker but your camera's going to make that noise it doesn't know what you want if you're looking through the glass it's going to do the because it's trying to find what you want it doesn't know you have to tell it so we either can manually focus it or you could put it on autofocus now that i have my um my sticker here that's nice and clear and the camera can focus on that with glass, we're still going to use um, that 45 degree angle. Let's see, how can I set this up? I'm gonna utilize this box here. So if here's my, my box or my, my glass, I'm still going to come in at that 45 degree angle to take that photo, okay? Still doing that 45 degree angle. And that, glass, uh, that flash is going to light up that fingerprint. This is the fastest and easiest way. You can take a picture on almost anything. It's, it's literally this quick. You develop this fingerprint, you can come in. Done. Another one here. There is, there it is. Done. Oh, one on here. Oh, that's gorgeous. A little further away. Done. That's how you do it. You don't need to have that um, tripod to take pictures. Again, look at the difference between a, the macro lens and then the regular lens. You, you, you really need the macro lens if you really want to take good pictures of these fingerprints. And that's it. It's really that simple, friends. Uh, you can take pictures of fingerprints so quick, so easy. The pictures are going to be beautiful. Make sure you use your scale. 
You don't need a tripod for it, particularly if you're out on the scene. To be dragging that thing around is really just going to be cumbersome. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, please leave some comments below and follow me on YouTube and Instagram. And keep an eye out because we're going to have some new training coming up. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.